All right, we're here with Eric Gilson in his backyard garden. Yeah, I'm and actually in the backyard this time. It is in the backyard. So he's going to give us a tour here of his garden and see what's going on. So we try to utilize as much space as we can. Um, we got a peach or a nectarine. I think it's a, a peach. But then we got squash underneath it. So kind of, I think they called it guild gardening. And then that way um, you can put stuff around the peach tree or any tree and then it'll help protect it from pests and stuff. And then that way when you're watering too, um, you're not wasting as much water. But uh, we stuck a couple plants here. And then all of these in this whole area over here are all fruit trees all the way down. We probably got uh, about 15 fruit trees from almonds to peaches, apples. Um, this is the Arkansas black apple. And then that's a pear. How long has that been growing there, the Arkansas uh, we black? We just put in this year. Okay. And uh, we got it lulls for about like 40 bucks. And this one's doing pretty good for size wise. This is our garden. We uh, don't use chemicals. Uh, I mean, we'll use neem oil, all natural stuff. So most of the stuff that you see uh, weed wise, we pull out by hand. So we have black raspberries over there, a fig tree. And uh, we just stopped harvesting our asparagus. So all this right here is asparagus. And then past the asparagus, you have strawberries, which both of these are good companion plants to put together. Uh, strawberries and asparagus. So in this bed, we have peppers. These are all started by seed. Uh, we generally, I started uh, uh, January 1st inside under grow lights. And then uh, I think we tried to do about 80 varieties and then we did about 38 varieties of tomatoes which are just scattered throughout the yard so but uh a lot of them have peppers on them already which you know for a growing season is pretty uh good that one over here i think this is a ghost pepper i thought it was a scotch bonnet but uh you know when you trade seeds you get what you get so but uh these are all tomatoes and what we did is we trimmed the bottom about 18 inches up and then most of the suckers got removed off it just to kind of give it more of a open because I'm not familiar with the humidity here so uh, we're just going on a learning curve. Yeah for the viewers Eric and his family moved here from Paradise California last year. Yeah about this time actually. This time almost, last year. Almost a year. So here we have lettuce and then onions and then more peppers that, these are later peppers that got put in. And then uh, we have corn that Amy just planted in this box. And then sweet potatoes in the box over here. And then there's a variety of stuff in here. You got uh, radishes, eggplant, squash, and then lettuce. And then same over here, you got um, I think uh, these are all squash and then these are bean over here and then we have a rabbit that's hopping through the garden so oh, okay. we got to trap for them to <laughs> relocate them <laughs> and then uh, we have more squash in here and then we'll trellis all these up the up the side of the trellis and then we have beans right here too I like this uh, let me get some video of this trellis that's a good method just two poles too. I like that that you're not. Yeah. You know those can get expensive if you're. They're they run them. about sixteen bucks for this panel, but you know they're gonna last forever. And then your you know your T post you know about yeah four bucks each. But you know you put them in once. We just did zip ties just to put them in fast, and uh, you know you don't have to mess with them again. Yeah. They'll last probably longer than I will. So. That's a good strategy for our four by four community plots. Yep. And uh, you know, you could you could do vertical gardening with a lot of stuff and a lot of people just don't utilize that method. And uh, 
um, we started with this and we'll probably do a few other ones. So yeah. You just got to build your collection and, you know, spend what you can. Yeah. So here we had tomato or I'm uh, carrots in here and uh, right now it's just pretty much an empty bed and then we'll clean up all this and then we'll add whatever extra stuff we have uh, um, going in at the, you know, the start of summer. And then here are more tomatoes, which we did the same method and uh, so far they're working out pretty good. We already have tomatoes on here. This is probably an ivory pear. A tomato actually it is a chocolate pear so they'll get like a dark reddish brown very pretty get about this big for a, a pear tomato and they produce really good behind you we have a mix between either muscadines grapes and then a kiwi And then here you have more peppers. So these are filling out pretty nicely. Um, just the rate that they're growing here is, mm. I mean, it's amazing. It's probably twice as fast as what we're used to. Yeah, you know, I really shoved them in there because I've grown them before to where they didn't take up much room. But, you know, if you look at peppers in the wild, they're just gonna fall and grow where they go. So you could just cram them in there pretty good. Yeah, this is good. What do you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight. Yeah. So plus I think I basil. Did four rows. There might be more than that, but you just can't. So this okay. one we did a little bit uh, more spaced out, and then the one behind you we did four rows of four. Okay. About that. Mm -hmm. But even that, you know, is a pretty good space. Yeah. And these we put in later too, but still, I mean, all three of those plants have peppers already. So you'll like this, because uh, this is the Cherokee purple right here. Oh yeah. And uh, I have uh, netted bags that I'll, I'll toss over some flowers to save some seeds. Cool. Um, and then we have, so in this bed we did uh, radishes on the outside, which a lady at the seed swap uh, uh, recommended. So. I'm not sure either this is a daikon or it's a wasabi uh, flavored radish we got from Baker Creek, I believe, or West Coast Seeds. And then uh, here we did uh, basil in there too. Then we did marigolds. And then we did radishes on the outside so it's kind of a defense for any pests that we're gonna come through. Luckily we haven't had any, not to jinx ourselves, but uh, you know, so. We got raspberries here, we got persimmon, another great plant over here, and then there's another persimmon plant over there. And then uh, we have, I believe, our boysenberries back here. Just And these are thornless too, mm. so if you guys want any at the, um, uh, at the community garden, then uh, I could root some. Yes, absolutely. So these will, you know, get even bigger than that. We picked some last year about that big, and they're super sweet. So we'll be making a lot of jam with them, too. So we're going to have to kind of tromp through here. Oh, right? yeah. So this our is, was oh, in. my goodness. This is beautiful. Um, the rain the other day kind of just knocked them down. This is gorgeous. We planted about maybe 300 of them just to kind of do a barrier. Where did you get those from? Uh, just for, you know, there's probably Sam's Club, Walmart, and Lowell's, I believe. And we waited till they went on discount, too. So you get 50 bulbs for about 10 bucks, which is fantastic. So these five beds that we have right here, we just put in um, when everybody went on vacation due to the COVID. So all five of these beds, plus the weed barrier underneath and the soil, ran about 284 bucks for everything. So not too shabby.
All right, Eric, thank you for giving us a tour of your backyard garden and all the knowledge that you shared with us. Well, you know, we love growing stuff and next year we'll probably expand our garden into the lawn area over there and, uh, you know, just keep going. Just add more and more every year. Well, appreciate it. Thank you for all the volunteering you've been doing with the seeds and at the garden. You also have a community plot at the garden. So anytime you see Eric and his family at the garden, just give them a shout and uh, learn some things about gardening. I've learned a lot from you yeah, so far. Yeah, if anybody so. have any questions, I'll do the best I can. There. Yeah. Uh, you also have a uh, online community as well. Yeah, we. I had a, a bigger one in California, which had about 3,000 uh, members in it. So I started a small one called Conway Backyard Gardening and Friends. And then I have Gilson's Backyard Gardening, which is the page that we do for fun. Um, but, you know, we started pretty small this time. That way we do more physical stuff and stay mm. more offline yeah. and, uh, you know, less screen time. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll find you on those sites and check you later.